Hello and welcome to Art Again. My name is Jennifer Hawkins Connolly and I teach art at Joseph Charter School. Um, today we're going to look at one of the elements of design called color. And color is wonderful. I love color. I love lots of color. But what in the heck is color? Color is actually a wavelength. So if you could zoom in on this, my assistant who's filming. This is the visible spectrum. That means what we can see, and it comes out of white light. This little band right here. Now there's all kinds of wavelengths, and color is certain wavelengths. And on the very, very short, 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 short wavelengths, we have gamma rays and x-rays going up to ultraviolet. Then we have the visible light spectrum. This is what we can see, that tiny little band. And then we go on to infrared, radio waves, TV, and so forth. They get longer, much, much longer. So, with um, color being a property of light, we're dealing with physics. And if you don't believe me, let's go find out. So, why are we in my bedroom closet? Well, one, because of the coronavirus, we're shooting from home and two, to talk about light. Light, visible light, is white light, and it can be broken down by a prism or a raindrop into the colors of the rainbow. Now, what I want to show and demonstrate is that without light, we don't have color. Or anything. Hello, and welcome back to the studio. After our little demonstration that color and light are integrally related. So anyway, thinking about color and it being a wavelength has to do with pure color as light. When we work with it in paints, we're working with pigments, so it's a little bit different. It is that color that's actually in paint, well I can't get the lid off, paint, and in dye like clothing or even in our skin, the pigments of our skin. So when we mix those, they generally mix about the same as light, but not always. So keep that in mind when we go to our little exercise. Now, one way to think about color is as a rainbow, and that a useful tool is a color wheel where we take that rainbow and wrap it into a circle. And this can be useful in a number of ways. But first I wanna point out that also, theoretically, all colors can be mixed from three colors. We call them primary colors. Yellow, blue, and red. So you can see around here, if we mix yellow and red together, we get orange. And then if we mix more yellow with that orange, we get a yellowish orange. And so we go all the way around the color wheel mixing that. And we can get those. Now, that said, color has three main properties. So if we take one color, its name, hue, and that's one property, it has its name and the color associated with it. The second thing is, is lightness to darkness. So we'll pull this one up here. So if we look at yellow again, yellow can be lighter or darker in value, but it still has its same name, the hue, the color yellow. And then the third way, color can vary over here third way it can vary is in intensity or saturation. So here we are with yellow again. We can see that this yellow, the bigger section here, is brighter, more intense, and that this is a duller yellow, so bright to dull. And here it is on a photocopier. So this puts it all in gray tones, and those are almost identical. So it doesn't value, it doesn't change in value very much, but it does change in its intensity. So it's the three properties of color are its name, its hue, its chroma, or, and value, and intensity. I would like to share with you one of my favorite artists, Claude Monet, and he loved color along with the other impressionists. They never used black, they just used the colors of the spectrum to create lovely paintings. This painting demonstrates several things very nicely. It's a picture of poplars, and by the, just the use of color, he gets warm colors, those things are like reds, oranges, and yellows, to come forward in space. Cool colors, 
that we associate with things like green grass and blue sky, they tend to set back in space. And we can use that as a device to create the illusion of depth within a painting. And I would like to show you now um, what we're going to do. This is a little exercise. And we're going to use a can to create three circles. But first off, we're going to draw one circle. The uppermost one it should be yellow. It's tradition. And then we're going to put in another one and overlap them, a red. And then the last circle to put in will be blue. And it will overlap not only the red, but the yellow also. And then we're going to see how those colors combine and how we can get those really interesting mixes of colors. So orange, purple, and green. And then the center is called a neutral. It's usually brown or gray. about mixing colors, we can take this to another level. So if you take the idea of using a circle, and you can grab anything around the house, jar lids, I have a number of different jar lids, or other cans, or anything that's circular, and make circles. Have some of them overlap, have some that are free. Fill up your page to make a nice composition, a nice organization out of them and then you can start coloring. Color the whole circle so you have overlaps and so you can practice the blending and getting those intermediate colors. Now, you could use more than just these three. You could use these three alone or you could use more. So, color crayons, lots of different choices. And then you can see how the colors blend and mix. Now, if you wanna take it to another level, you could use what are traditionally warm colors, yellow, red, and orange, and put them in the circles and overlap, mainly those, and then use cool colors in your background. Here I've used purple. What that does is warm colors visually tend to move forward in space, while cool colors tend to recede. So you start getting a dimensional space going on with your abstract composition. So you can do this with anything. You could even blend. I have not blended in the background, but I have blended on these. So that would be a fun project to do. Perhaps you like to do realistic things though. And here is an example of one that I've started using flowers and the petals overlap to get those intermediate colors. And then I've also used four colored pencils in the background and then just blended those over the top. So I started out with green. I blended a little dark blue over the top. So there's green here and then a little light blue, transitional zones. And you can see it makes a beautiful and very colorful background with the warm colors in front. So. And that pretty much concludes our initial color studies and how to play with color and get many, many different colors from just a few. Okay, hope you have fun with that. And I look forward to seeing what you do. Bye.